Over the past couple of months, I've worked hours on end to create a space that would boost my productivity and take my creative work through the roof. After moving to my new place, my focus was mainly pegged on styling the living room and the office was left in a bit of a sorry state. Being a digital creator with lots of ideas, having a place where I can create, draw inspiration and learn about my craft became more compelling when I fully delved into the creative world. Hello and welcome to the value space. In this video, I'll be taking you through a step-by-step -step process of how I transformed and DIY'd my home office, then give you a mini desk tour. This is going to be the first of a series of videos that will break down the different sections of this room because there's a lot of content that I know is going to be too long to share in one video so be sure to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for consequent videos. Hopefully, this video will give you guys some inspiration and ideas as to what the best work from home setup will be for yourselves. That aside, let's get straight into it. Even though my previous setup was decent, it became so cluttered and I didn't feel happy and productive in it, hence the reason why I decided to give it a bit of a facelift to help improve my productivity and get my creative juices to an all-time high. In saying that, you really don't need the most expensive stuff or tech gear to be productive. Productivity can become second nature if you develop good habits and have the right mindset to go with it. My little TED talk aside, I jumped on the design and style of my home office which also doubled up as my YouTube studio to suit my creative needs and improve my productivity. Designing my living room took center stage early on and that left my home office in the back seat for a few months. If you haven't watched my living room setup tour, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. Prior to starting this, I had very little experience with DIY and most of it I learned from YouTube University. The first part was to clean, declutter and plan the layout of the office based on my needs. Like any design enthusiast, the entire design plan starts on a blank canvas from which I can tweak and model the pieces to my liking. I then got the measurements of my room, assessed my workflow needs and sketched potential layout configurations. From there, I then gathered inspirations from various platforms and Pinterest to see how best I'd design it. This design process is something I like to use when I design a new space and it revolves around the function, fluidity and cohesiveness of the space. After settling down on a general direction, I started exploring materials, colors and different design styles that would best suit my needs. To ensure I have enough storage to store away my gear and utilities, I needed to revamp my storage and also make it aesthetically pleasing. I decided to add extra storage by installing an industrial style shelving unit which would host a few plants, my watch box, printer and other utilities. Before starting the build process, I used to start finder to ensure I don't puncture any pipes or drill into cables. After installing the fast shelf, I repeated the same process for the rest of the parts before mounting it on the wall. Up until this point, everything seemed okay until I stepped back and realized that the floating shelves were too close to the industrial shelving unit, hence throwing off the balance which is important in bringing in fluidity and cohesiveness. I paused for a moment, <sighs> took a deep breath, I realized what I'd just done. I felt deflated but knew that wasn't the end of the world. I knew I could fix it and get the shelves repositioned in the right place. I quickly uninstalled the shelves patch up the holes with multi-purpose filler, then left it to dry. As the wall dried, I started DIYing the floating shelves. First off was the red IKEA lock shelf unit in the corner. After much consideration, I ended up changing the color from red to black to match the aesthetic in the room. I initially wanted to completely get rid of it, but realized it would come in handy, especially on the storage front. To help me avoid making a mess, I unmounted it from the wall and spray painted it in my courtyard. After giving it a single coat, I let it dry before mounting it back up on the wall. Up next were the black and white ones next to the industrial shelf. Using contact paper, I changed the color from white and black to walnut. The contact paper has guidelines which make cutting it not that hard of a job. The process wasn't as easy as I thought it would be, but after trying it a few times, I eventually did it. I slowly pressed the contact paper on the shelves with my fingers to get rid of any air bubbles and to be honest it wasn't perfect but I'd say 
the end product was pretty decent. Once I got to the end of the shelf, I cut off any excess paper using a pair of scissors and wrapped it around to create a crisp line. The following morning, I mounted the industrial shelving unit since I had to apply a coat of paint to cover the inconsistencies from the filler. I gave the area a quick sand, then painted it white using the natural white by Dulux. As the paint was drying, I started working on the IKEA Alex drawers. During the initial assembly, I interchanged the bottom and top part, so I had to fill up the holes with multi-purpose filler. After that, I gave the drawers a light sand and I spray painted them black to match the aesthetic I was going for. I used the 2-in-1 rust oleum spray paint. That meant I didn't need to prime the drawers before painting. I used painter's tape to avoid any spillage and did this in my little courtyard as well. One coat of paint was enough and the drawers were good to go. While they dried in the courtyard, I reinstalled the industrial shelving unit, added three baskets on the bottom shelf for additional storage, then started working on my desk setup. As a person who's big on health and fitness, a desk setup that would champion this was at the forefront of my mind when I was making the changes. I first bought the 74 by 32 inches IKEA Calbi countertop, which was quite heavy carrying into the house. I then upgraded from a sitting desk to a sit-stand desk with the help of my good friends at Desky Australia who gave me a massive discount on the dual sit-stand desk and cable management tray. Setting up was easy, after laying down the walnut desktop, I put the individual parts on it, measured and marked the allowance for the IKEA Alex drawers immediately after, then started the assembly. I started with one leg and repeated the same process for the other side before finishing off with the rest of the parts. The sit stand desk comes with a press interface to adjust the desk by holding the up and down buttons or by using the two programmable settings to automatically get to the sitting and standing heights. I also got an anti fatigue standing desk mat to stand on when using the desk on its standing preset. I like the IKEA Calbi and for few good reasons. First off, it gives me plenty of space to work on and its look which is beautiful crafted with a walnut veneer. Using this as the main piece of my setup really adds a warm and natural look to the space which fits perfectly well with the theme I settled for. After the desk was done, I got the desk into position with one floating shelf on it to get a rough idea of how I'd center it. I then centered it on the wall before getting the support button, making the measurements, ensuring it was straight using a spirit level, then finally mounted it. I repeated the same process for the lower shelf and added brackets underneath for extra support. As I tightened the final screw with the brackets, I felt a lot of relief as I'd finished the hardest part of the makeover. The DIY Alex drawers complement the setup sitting on either side of the desk. To ensure they stay neat, Clean and for easy accessibility of items, I put in IKEA drawer organizers. From there, I also added two tiny walnut floating shelves from IKEA on the right for my trophies. They came pre-drilled and all I had to do was buy screws from Bunnings and mount them on the wall. With so many set lines in the office already, I opted to have them slightly offset to create a different pattern that would bring that visual interest. Right above the shelves, I installed an IKEA pegboard and attached pegboard bins on it which would help store stuff I need for quick access like camera mounts, pens and so many other things. When I bought them from IKEA, the black pegboards were out of stock so I got the white ones and spray painted them black. A quick tip here, if you need any help visualizing where things should be mounted on your wall, use Painter Step to create guides to help you see where things can line up. I learned this hack from one of my favorite YouTubers, Matthew Encina. With the build part of the makeover out of the way, it was now time to upgrade hardware, desk peripherals and accessories. Before putting anything on the desk, I did one pass of sanding with plain printer paper. This is a wood shop technique I learned from my good friends at Gromit. They use this to finish off all their wood products, which gives any wood surface an ultra smooth finish. Starting off with a computer and monitor. I previously used the 21 inch 4K Apple iMac that served me well but struggled big time when it came to editing, especially graphic intense footage. The need to upgrade became more apparent when the dreaded wheel of death kept popping up even when performing the most mundane tasks like opening apps. 
For that reason, I got the M1 Mark Mini with 16GB of unified memory and upgraded the storage to 512GB. Not only do I get the bang for my bucks, but from the reviews I've watched, it makes light work of any heavy duty artillery I throw at it. Let me know if you'd like me to do a dedicated review. For my display, I chose the Samsung CJ89 49 inch Super Ultrawide monitor, which provides the screen real estate that comes in handy, especially when editing. Since having the screen placed on the desk would take a huge chunk of the space, I mounted it on the Agatron HX monitor arm to achieve a clean and floating look. In my opinion, one of the best heavy duty monitor arms, although installation wasn't as simple as I thought it would be. I first laid the monitor upside down on cushions to avoid damaging it, then mounted the adapter. Following the manual, I assembled the rest of the parts and it took me close to 45 minutes. Despite the challenging installation, it works well because of its ability to hold the weight of the super ultra wide monitor and enables me to easily adjust the screen further back or closer to my face. It also helps with cable management through the cable management channel on the monitor app. I put two coasters underneath the clamp to avoid leaving any marks on the desktop. With the computer done, the next obvious thing were the desk accessories and peripherals. Starting off with the iconic monitor riser from Gourmet which goes underneath the monitor. Its walnut top adds a natural look to the desk which helps elevate the setup. As for function, it's where I store my M1 Mark Mini and on the right side there's a sliding desk tray also from Gourmet that hosts most of my desk essentials like pens, pencils, markers among many other things. Moving on to sound, my desk speakers of choice are the Canto U2 in Walnut which rest on speaker stands that elevate them into the perfect angle. Connection was straightforward and took me less than 10 minutes. I bet you guys would agree they blend in so well with the setup. For my voiceovers, I chose the Blue Yeti microphone which I mounted on a cheap boom amp from Amazon. Whenever I'm not using the speakers, I use the AirPod Max that I dock on this beautiful Warner stand from Amazon as well. To avoid scratching and leaving any marks on the desk while using, I added a wool felt desk pad and a few coasters from Minimal Desk. Moving on to peripherals, I upgraded to the Apple Magic Keyboard which sits on a walnut keyboard tray from Grobman. For the mouse, I switched to the Logitech MX Master 3 which in my opinion is the best mouse and I put it on a Grobman mousepad. Ergonomics being a key component of the setup, I added a walnut keyboard wrist rest from Grobman and the Capio 2.0 mouse wrist rest from Delta Hub. To finish off the peripherals, I placed the Grobman MagSafe stand at arm's reach for fast charging and easy accessibility. My current laptop is the 2017 MacBook Pro which works as an alternate workstation, especially when I'm not in the office. Just like my iMac, I plan to upgrade it to the M1 14-inch MacBook Pro since it struggles with editing. Moving on to cable management. The trick to cable management is not to be able to see cables when you are looking at the setup from the phone. The one important thing to note with the standing desk, you only want one cable coming out of the power socket, that's why it's important to use a long extension cord. A tip with the power cord, you don't want to tie it in until the desk is at its maximum height, as this would ensure you don't tie it too short. To make it cleaner, I mounted the power board behind one of the drawers. Under the desk, I'm using a cable tray from Deskey that came with two power boards which add extra sockets to my setup. When I add more devices on the setup, this will come in handy especially on the power supply front and ensuring the cables stay neat. As for the few cables in the setup, I've used cable ties and clips to make sure everything stays neat and tidy. I know you must be wondering, why is he still using that gaming chair, yet it clearly doesn't fit the space? Well, say no more. As a content creator, I sometimes sit for hours on end, therefore ergonomics is really important to keep me healthy. I initially had this cheap gaming chair I bought from Facebook Market and it quickly started to show wear and tear. For that reason, I upgraded to the Eames replica office chair that complements the walnut theme and adds a touch of class with its premium executive look. Assembly was straightforward and I fixed everything in less than 10 minutes as most of the parts came pre-assembled. 
Let me know in the comment section if you'd like an in-depth desk setup tour. Before I go on, I want to put a disclaimer that a lot of the items you see in here I've acquired over time and are items that I've wanted and not necessarily need, even though they play a part in my productivity. That's it and done, if you're interested in any of the items, I'll leave links in the description box. Moving on to decor. The sound piece is this vintage telephone I got from a thrift shop and boy, what drama and character does it add to the setup with its bronze and rustic features. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Still on the vintage vibe, I got a few old school cameras to help personalize and style the space. I also added the Eames house band to emphasize the mid-century modern theme in all my setups, then put a water fountain with LED lighting on the industrial shelf and I must admit it sets quite the mood on those late nights. To cap off the decor, I mounted this wall hanging that basically summarizes my life mantra. Moving on to plants. Taking care of plants and watching them grow has become one of my favorite pastime activities. Just like in my living room, I put some on the industrial shelving unit to soften the industrial look, then did a simple DIY by spray painting the cotton rail block and hung some plants on it. I also added a fake bamboo plant on the right hand corner and a few IKEA plants on the desk and the floating shelves above. The showstopper is this levitating plant that leaves a lot of people in awe. I spray painted the pot block to tie in with the ongoing color scheme. All in all, they help add a touch of greenery and provide the much needed visual interest that is a spectacle for the senses. Moving on to light. As it goes without saying, nothing exists without light. You get to see colors, shapes and texture when light meets matter. I get a generous amount of natural light from the huge window, although I sometimes have it shut to control my lighting when shooting content as this gives me total control of the footage when editing. For supplementary lighting, I chose different lights for specific purposes and to help create different moods, especially in the evenings. Starting with a BenQ screen by Halo I placed on top of the monitor. I like it not only because of its pet saving capabilities but also due to its ability to light a large area and that enables me to have visibility of everything and keep my eyes healthy. On one corner of the desk, I place a desk lamp that has this never-ending wow effect because of its ability to float. It originally had a silver body and an oak base and to make it match with the aesthetic of the setup, I spray painted it black on the body and brown on the base using the 2-in-1 rust oil spray paint. On the other side, I placed the Tanabi from IKEA that comes with a dial knob to enable you to turn it on and off. For ambient lighting behind the desk, I installed the Meros LED light strips. Installation was straightforward, I first cut it to my desired length, then peeled the cover of the adhesive backing before carefully attaching it behind the desk. I also installed the Genio LED cabinet lights on the industrial shelving unit not only to create different moods but also act as task lighting. Moving on, I placed the mark post from IKEA, probably butchered that name, next to the bamboo plant and it's always set at a low intensity to create a warm and inviting space. To cap off the lighting, the next piece is this cup floor lamp which gives the space a bit of a dramatic look as you come into the office and acts as task lighting, especially on those plain lights, I decide to burn the midnight oil. All in all, they set up the perfect mood depending on what I feel. After working on the setup for a few months, here's the before and after. While I'm happy with the current iteration, as a design enthusiast, I'll be tweaking and making the changes to the space as time goes. With that said and done, it's time to get back to work.